Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, today we're talking about that mash drop knife that I showed recently. This is the uh, Prism. Um, Tashi Barucha, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, design. Uh, this was uh, basically a copy of his custom, which is called the Church. And the Church is a very expensive custom knife, um, ranging anywhere from like $1,500 to $2,100, if you want one right now. I think originally they were maybe like $1,200. I just did some quick research on it. Um, you know, interesting design. There's kind of just some random, you know, shapes cut out of the handle here. What makes this really interesting and really cool, and I kind of wish I'd see this more, and maybe there are a ton of knives like this, I just don't, you know, haven't focused on them. But uh, this is a two-piece titanium um, frame lock. I zoomed in here for you so you can see that there is a, a little lock bar uh, insert in there as well. Um, but what's really interesting about this, uh, this frame is that there's no spacers. It's just a two-piece frame. All right, so titanium is cut out so that we have a wider end here so that they uh, close the gap. So there's no need for a spacer. Now, if, at first glance, especially with this finish on here, this looks like it's a one-piece titanium integral frame lock. Okay, it does not look like it's two pieces. This is extremely well done extremely smooth here it's almost difficult to see the actual seam all right if i get the light right and the camera focuses properly there we go oh there we go you can see it you can see it like down here the actual seam but uh that gets lost if you're not focused on it it gets completely lost it's a very very comfortable design having it like that it's just really really nice i mean again we're not doing a whole lot of stabbing in the verse grip it feels awesome it's just super smooth um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I just, I really like, it's a very, very simple, clean design. I love that it's just two piece, no space there. It's actually a stronger design by having it like that. Not that we see, you know, people's uh, backspacers being crushed or anything like that, but technically it is a stronger design. Um, overall, I like the, the knife a lot. All right. So just the knife specifically, cause I, I mentioned previously that I want to focus on the blade steel, which we will in a little bit later in the video. Uh, but the knife design is fantastic. I just, I love it. I love everything about it. Um, there is a, a large opening hole here. I have been doing the little like, you know, spider flick to get it out. Just seems natural and easy with this one. Um, you can obviously, you know, use the large opening to slowly open it. Uh, flicking it open with the thumb is a little bit more difficult for me. See, I just slipped off because I, I couldn't grab it. You can still do it, but it's not very consistent. So I just tend to do that little middle finger spider flick. Um, super comfortable. So here's a closer look at it. Just want to give it a little spin closed. Now here's something that uh, I did not notice right away. The previous owner did add their own jimping. Okay, I, I, I even noticed this because I got this in trade and I didn't buy this. Uh, I traded for it. It was an interesting offer. Haven't seen it before. And I thought, oh yeah, cool, I'll check it out. Um, and I carried this a couple times before I even knew because when I was looking at stock pictures of this because I want to see what other colors were available and there were originally there was three other colors this is the blue one um, but I'm looking at it I'm like there's no jimping in the stock picture and I kind of looked at this closer and I realized that this was this was kind of homemade all right so homemade jimping that's totally functional um, but obviously does not come you know on the, the stock knife and here's a little shot of it open uh, I just like the design. I mean, the knife itself is fantastic. I would highly recommend this. Originally, these are around $200. I mean, now that they're long gone, uh, I'm not sure what the secondary market has to offer on them. Um, but, you know, if you really, really want one, you could find one somewhere. But expect anywhere from like $200 to $250. That would be my best guess on these. Again, there's three other colors besides this one. This one is the, uh, the bluish uh, coloration, which I really like. Kind of a stone wash finish on there. But we have a, you know, satin blade. Just really, really nice. I love it. Love the knife. Um, as far as the uh, pocket clip, because I and by the way, super, super smooth too. All right, just awesome. The pocket clip is somewhere in between super loose and stiff. All right, so sometimes on these uh, frame locks, especially when you have these kind of custom uh, designed clips, different shapes that go more with the design. Uh, they tend to be super, super stiff, all right? This one is not too bad. It's on the stiffer side compared to, you know, a regular old spring clip, but it's still extremely usable. This does carry a little bit higher in the pocket because of its placement. You can see this is where the bottom of the uh, clip is, so that is pretty much sticking up, all right? You could use the back portion of uh, this, you know, skeletonized frame for a lanyard if you wanted to add a lanyard to it, but uh, I don't know. 
I don't know anyone who would. I don't see it's uh, necessary, but I mean, if it was just a show knife and you wanted to, you know, color match a, a lanyard or something. I guess you could do that, you know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I did want to focus a little bit more on the blade steel, okay? Because this is my first time using this blade steel. So the knife itself, awesome, amazing. I can't say enough good about it. I absolutely love it. So if you can get one, I'm sure you'd like it as well. Very, very good user knife. But again, the focus here was really on this blade steel. All right, so let me get the hand behind there so I can get that to focus. And there it is, RWL34. All right, what does that stand for? Well, Robert W. Loveless 34, or essentially ATS 34. Because Bob Loveless, which we know him as, most people, his actual full name is Robert W. Loveless, um, he is a, a god in the, the knife community, all right? Definite knife OG, custom maker, heavily involved in the knife industry for many, many years. Unfortunately, he passed away back in 2010. Very, very sad. Um, but uh, he was a big fan of using uh, ATS-34. ATS-34 is a Japanese ball bearing steel. Now, when I got into the knife scene back in the early 90s and started learning about knives and, and seeing some more expensive knives, you saw a lot of 154 CM being used, but you also saw a lot of ATS-34. And there was a big rush of all these different knives made in Japan because the Japanese cutlery were just top notch, some of the best in the world. All right, and ATS-34 was heavily used by a lot of different companies. Um, I'm still a huge fan of it, and I love 154 CM, and they're both very, very close. They're pretty much identical. Um, you know, it's just made in different, uh, different places. That's all it really is. However, the RWL 34 was created, um, basically to commemorate, um, Bob Loveless. So again, the RWL is uh, a little, uh, homage to, uh, Bob Loveless, his initials, Robert W. Loveless, but the 34 is not just ATS 34. They actually did a powdered version of this and it is phenomenal. I mean, I can't even begin to say how you know impressive this edge is. It is absolutely ridiculous. The previous owner did sharpen this. This does not have the stock uh, edge on it, and it seems like they they really went fine with it because it's it's almost a mirror polish. Uh, you can see that kind of flickering there if I hit the light right. But uh, I did uh, use this a ton on cardboard, zip through, zip through, zip through, um, stropped it up. Never had to sharpen it. Uh, I just, I haven't used it enough to actually needed to sharpen it. It just dropped up fairly easily, um, about 15, 20 passes on either side, and it was good to go. Uh, and that was just with the uh, green paste on a regular leather strop. Now, I know I've talked about this in the past, but just in case you haven't seen those videos, um, powdered steels are amazing. They're absolutely amazing. When you put a steel together with powder, you can have much smaller molecules, okay? So the carbon is much, much smaller. So, uh, I don't know, imagine like... Imagine a ball pit, okay? You know, like when you're a kid or if you have kids and you, you brought them to play areas or whatever, and you have that, that pit with all those plastic balls in it, right? Imagine each one of those balls is your different elements, you know? Um, and that's like on a molecular structure. So you're looking through a microscope, you're seeing those solid chunks of carbon, right? Uh, imagine now you refill that with golf balls. That's the difference, okay? They're much smaller molecules. All right, so when you have a tighter grain structure on steel, you can have a finer edge. So these powdered steels are literally able to get sharper, okay, than their counterparts. It really is just amazing stuff. I'm a huge fan of all the powdered steels. Um, to give you an example, if you've used 154 CM, and if you've been around the knife scene for a while, that's probably something you're familiar with. Um, 154 CM is an awesome steel, but it's not as good as CPM 154. Those are two different steels, okay? Uh, the powdered version of a steel is almost always better in, in a lot of different ways, but it just really takes an amazing, amazing edge. This thing is, it's a lightsaber. It's crazy how great this slices. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, the knife itself, the mass drop uh, prism, definitely an A plus on that. I mean, uh, if you can find one, try it. Definitely try it. If you like the way it looks, you like the design, it is comfortable. Um, the only downside is how that carries. I know some people do like their, you know, super deep conceal clips and stuff. So having that stick up a little bit might be kind of a bummer to you. Uh, but as far as its usability, it's, it's through the roof. It's just, it's very comfortable. Um, you know, it, it's a, it's a fantastic performing knife. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. 
If you've personally used RWL 34 on different knives, let me know what they are. I'd love to see some different options out there because I am a fan of the steel. I'd like to pick it up again uh, on some other blades in the future. So that's all. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care. Ooh, look how smooth that is. Love it.